going to tell you a bear story that happened last night. It happened right here. This is kind of my boneyard area. A bunch of materials here that I need to use for different projects. Like that. And I have my water there that I do laundry with and a bunch of stuff here. But this is not a very trafficked area unless I want to chill somewhere and um, it's pretty hot any, you know, everywhere else and I don't want to go into the woods, this is the perfect spot. However, you'll see why, but this is like the best place for a bear. It's full of blackberries and full of pretty much things and stuff that they eat. And I've seen a family of raccoons that live in this wilderness that I'm looking at right now and I'll show you. And I've seen some foxes and I've seen uh, skunks that I've seen. They live in my driveway. And they, there's a culvert there and they kind of live there and then they move in this area. But there's always rustling and there's always noise in here because you know there's wildlife in this area and we eat these blackberries we love the blackberries but it's taken over by a bunch of other things too um, like weeds and ferns but let me tell you the story so over there in the driveway it is very very long I started hearing these footsteps and they were pretty heavy, mm -hmm. you know, you could tell that it was either, I thought it was a person, I thought it was my husband coming home late after work. Sometimes he works very crazy schedules and he comes back at 2, 3 in the morning. It was around 1 and, okay, so. It was in the driveway and as I was looking out the window because I stuck my head out the window to look I see in the driveway right there a humongous bear it made a bunch of noises you know the kind of noises that you hear on scary movies when there's like a big animal coming like a bear or something it was moving all the leaves and climbing on this tree that I don't know how I was able to hold it, but you can see there are a lot of branches on the floor. And I'm sure he was eating these blackberries. There's a bunch of flowering blackberries. And then he moved over there. There is some bear scat over there. And um, so he broke up a couple of these branches and it was pretty it was pretty crazy he stuck around for about two hours the craziest thing is that the dogs didn't bark they were passed out yet I could hear it I mean I had to stick my head out of the window but it was so terrifying what he was doing or the way that that he was doing things it was so terrifying because you can hear like everything like you know like wrestling and and then he was chewing very loudly like you could hear him chew on things and we do have an apple tree somewhere there and we were told that there is a bear who loves those apples. It's kind of sick. I, I mean, I had a few apples from it. But right now it has a bunch of green apples. So I don't know. I haven't been there. They're working somewhere on the road. It's not pretty close, but... So this is... My little bear enclosure apparently they love to come and hang out now not those i don't know what happened to those missing limbs but this that one over there it was fine i don't know if you can see it but there's a couple of them that recently broke and i know it was last night i could hear them crunching 
and like I said, he's he stuck around for. I think the last time I heard him, it was around. Maybe he started at one, maybe two thirty. And then it kind of stopped. And then around three, L came. And that part over there, there were like four of them, huge ones. And they're having babies, so they're kind of not nice. I love the spot to come here when it's hot. Right now it's super hot. But at night this is kind of a different deal and I'll probably try to get some footage of how dark this is at night and why he likes to hang around here. It looks pretty disgusting right now because, you know, it has to filter whatever was sitting. Let's see, it will start to clear up. But, so what I've been doing is collecting water in this wheelbarrow and keeping the ducks kind of comfortable. I got that little blood tub over there I'll show you in a minute. But they like it. Um, as you can see, it's clear now. Uh, I don't care to leave it, you know, any other way. Like, try to leave the muddiness out of it because the ducks are messy and they love the creeks. So now it's very, very clear. It got rid of the. And that mud is gonna settle at the bottom. So this is gonna be clear, clean water. For whatever reason, you know, I do this every couple of days I fill this up and then with a bucket that is inside I refill their water over there that is now pretty dirty so I am going to show you how we've been kind of dealing with the water situation especially for the ducks that they need so much water and when you're hauling in water for yourself it's kind of a yeah and no no I own this other one that as you can see, I wait until it's clear. The dogs drink from it. I actually, that's where I get my water for the garden. Because I still water by hand um, until I can figure it out more hoses that will take me to the garden. But it's almost, it wouldn't make it, I don't know, 300 feet of hose right now. So I'm not into it at the moment. But I fill this up as well every two days. I clean everything, the dog stuff, wash everything with clean water. And that way, you know, every two days is not that bad. And as you can see, whatever is um, kind of making the water look dirty, it settles in the bottom and I wash it every time. And for what we use it, we don't have to have it, you know, perfectly clear. Um, the water is amazing for my plants. Once that is overflowing, then I'll move on to cleaning up the rest. The ducks love when I dump this here because a bunch of bugs come up to the surface. It's a double win.
Now this water is the one that I change every day with the water from the wheelbarrow. I don't know if you can see, but it's clean water. And you do all that, and they go inside that little water. They'll get in eventually that one, but not yet. Now, I leave this on, and as it fills up, I go with my watering can, and it will start to empty, but I leave it on, so that way it continues to fill up, and I can water it. And I water it until I see water come out. Most of the time, it's about a gallon of water that this will take and will keep it moist for something weeks. Same thing here. So when I come back, it's almost full again, if not full, and I'll do the same thing. This will take two gallons, so I'll take two gallons out of it, and I'll leave it. And that way, I always have enough. This one is more targeted towards the root, so I get rid of the attachment and just water it. Again, I can dump easily a gallon of water on each plant. But that means that they will stay healthy and happy longer. As you can see, it really takes all the water because under underneath it has so much organic matter that it's easy to absorb. And it's not like it drains right up out of it. It actually stays in the root of the plant. And I try to only water where it needs to be water, otherwise I am feeding weed. Thank <laughs> you. 